Hello, everybody, and welcome to EduMatch. So thank you so much for tuning in. We are so excited to have you all join us today. And I'm super excited because I get to talk to Wiley Brazier, just an amazing, awesome person. So welcome, Wiley. Glad to have you on here. Glad to be here, Sarah. Thanks for Oh, the pleasure is the pleasure is mine. So I'm going to tell everybody a little bit about you. Wiley is a veteran educator, Flipgrid ambassador, Classflow ambassador, and Google for Education certified trainer. Who has served as a secondary principal and central office administrator for district and state agencies. He was a founding principal of the Louisville Knight School. I'm sorry, Louisville Knight High School in Louisville, Texas. Under his leadership, the school made a major positive impact for at-risk and non-traditional students in the district, which led him led to him running his efforts in Dallas ISD, where he was also the founding principal of the John Leslie Patton Jr. Academic Center. This school helped Dallas ISD to reach its largest graduation cohort at the time. Wiley is a featured speaker for conferences across the U.S. and the founder of LA Ed Chat. Louisiana's online professional learning network held every first and third Tuesday from 7 to 8 p.m. on Twitter. During the 2014-2015 school year, Wiley purchased the first set of Chromebooks in the East Baton Rouge Paris school system. He also led all Chromebook pilots for the district's one-to-one -one initiative, which now impacts students across the districts in grades four through nine with over 20,000 Chromebooks. Oh my goodness, Wiley, that is... That is just amazing. So uh, again, super, super happy to have you on here. Yes, and it's great to be here with you, the infamous doctor. And let me say congrats, congratulations to you, uh, Dr. Sarah Thomas. Major. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I, I really appreciate that. I really, really do. So, but let, let's talk about you. So tell me who or what inspired you to go into education? Um. So for me, I grew up, my father died when I was 12. OK. And so I grew up in a household with, um, you know, I had my older brothers, but it was a single parent household with just my mom. And, you know, because I was younger, my brothers and sisters were leaving the house. And actually, when I went to school in high school, there was a principal of mine named Mr. James Machen. And he was like very well put together, had his stuff together, well spoken highly respected and you know we look as black men as black people we look up to people who look like us in order to be like them so kind of like you know uh, uh barack obama is another major black figure that, I, that many black men look up to you know he was one uh dr james mr james machin was one that that encouraged me uh, I looked up to him and he's actually, you know, I, I don't know if he knows it or not, but he is one of the reasons why I ended up in education. I wanted to make an impact on uh, on the next generation uh, like he had made an impact on me. Absolutely. So the importance of role models cannot be understated. So. So, yeah, so you've been in education now um, and have been doing some major uh, initiatives and just moving and shaking. So uh, part of what you do is connecting with other educators. So mm -hmm. what have you learned along the way of your journey in connecting with other educators? Um, I think one of the main things is, you know, just being real and being personal with them, having that. Uh, and, and cultivating that relationship, having regular interactions, you know, uh, even though we are miles apart, uh, using tools to be able to continue dialogue, not just, you know, hey, Twitter is phenomenal. Let me say that. OK, it's phenomenal. But it's one thing to be able to tweet to someone and have an online conversation, because I've had many of those. And this past year at ISTE, I was able to make first uh, uh, real life face to face connections, but also using things like uh, like Voxer to be able to actually have a verbal conversation with the person as well, um, using a variety of other tools. So I think just continuing to uh, cultivate the relationships and have ongoing dialogue so that you can really get to know the person, even though they may be around the world in Australia or in China or somewhere, you know. So I think that's one of the main things, just continue to cultivate relationships. Absolutely. And you speak about ISTE. That's the first time that we met face to face. So that, yeah, that yeah. was, yeah. So last year was just great. Yeah. yeah. Are you going this year too? 
<clears throat> yes, I definitely am, you know, and, and you were one of my first people who I really interacted with on Twitter and then had that that wild moment of, oh, wait, that's Sarah. That's Sarah. Wait, you've been talking online, you know? So, yeah, that was, that was a, 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 ISTE this past year was phenomenal. And that was a moment that kind of solidified for me. Look, this is a conference I have to attend every year. And this is the reason why I am a struggle, uh, continuing to uh, uh, become that connected educator. You know, to meet all these famous, not famous, well, famous to me, but <laughs> but these great educators, right? You know, I totally hear you. And the feeling is mutual. You're you're definitely a great educator in my book as well. So, um, so you are always like, I see you everywhere. Everywhere I look, you're there. You're there. You're there. So, uh, recently you did a webinar about innovative ways to teach science using technology. So, what were some of the things that you shared from that session? So um, I shared a few different resources um, um, and they are actually available now on the website. Um, but I've shared one thing about being able to use uh, Google Sites. Main thing, you know, we are a G Suite district. And so um, we have a lot of different Chromebooks out into the schools and in the hands of students. And, you know, the Chromebook is just a tool, but you have to have you have to empower people, teachers, educators, uh, even principals to be able to use that tool properly in order to engage students at a higher level. So one of the main things that we went through, that I went through during my portion of it was going through G Suite uh, for education using uh, Google Classroom in a science classroom, um, also using things like Google Sheets. Uh, we discussed um, we discussed uh, using it in an AP environmental science classroom to be able to uh, allow students to take these standards based assessments uh, using Google Forms, but then taking the, the, the scores that they made, tapping them into the Google Sheet to, uh, are you okay there? But being able to. <laughs> No, you're good. I know you, you have a little allergy there, but yeah. So, um, <clears throat> but uh, but taking those scores that they made on those automated assessments in Google Forms, plugging them into Google Sheets, and being able to see what they would make on an AP exam. So that so that that was a really great tool. Also, going through uh, uh, different learning walks and data walks uh, as students, and having them to be able to uh, learn the, the content so much that they can teach it to others, find mistakes in others, uh, work and being able to correct and re-explain to them in a different way, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. They say yeah. a lot of times that the best way to learn something is to teach it. So I think that that's cool that, uh, that you, you shared that. So that is awesome. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So, one of the things that never ceases to amaze me is when I see your live stream game, it's just like, oh my gosh, I need to step my game up and come to his level. So you use OBS a lot. So uh, how did you learn OBS? Um, you know, I, I'm going to be honest with you. A year ago, I didn't know what in the world OBS was, you know? <laughs> And so I just uh, I found out about I found out about it, and I just really going back to what you were talking about earlier. The question we were talking about is that connecting with other educators. You know, um, I have a, a, a couple of go-to people. You know, um, you know Brian uh, Romero, Brian Smith, should I say, <laughs> Brian Smith out there in Dallas. He um, he jumped on, and we collaborate. He showed me a few things. Claudio Zavala, he uh, had another little session with me and showed me a couple of things. And then from there, I just kind of used my own eye. I might not have the, the artistic eye that some of them may have, but I have my own style, you know? And so I used my own style of design and kind of what I wanted to look like in order to just continue refining the skills that they showed me, kind of, you know, upgrading some of the things and adding on. And then of course, you know, YouTube, it, you know, there's everything on YouTube, right? You know, so I went there as well and tried to just kind of own my own skills and my own style of what I wanted it to look like. So 
that's really, you know, the, not, nothing fancy. I didn't go to school for it, didn't take any courses or anything of that nature. Just, you know, loving to uh, create those videos and get it together, become better. Yeah, I totally hear you on that. And I, I love that. Just diving in, uh, learning it. You know, you can teach yourself a lot of things on YouTube. So, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. practice yeah. and connecting with other people. So, that is awesome. That is awesome. What are some other tools that you like in education? Um, so some other tools that I like, um, I just actually recorded today a, uh, video on, uh, this new tool called classroom screen. Um, and it's a really phenomenal tool at, uh, classroomscreen.com. They, it, it actually turns your computer into a, uh, a interactive white panel. You've got all the tools that you need for cues from, for kids to, I mean, a little bit of everything there. So that's a that's a tool that that I'm uh, advocating for teachers to use. Um, and then, of course, there's uh, I encourage people to use Voxer. You know, to continue connecting with educators. I know you're on there. Like you don't sleep. You know, you're just on there twenty four seven. And so, um, uh, so those are a couple of other tools. Of course, G Suite for education. Um, Google Slides has really come, come up with some, I love the add-ons that they have come out with. And so uh, incorporating uh, Pear Deck, um, of course, Classflow is, is, a, is a really great tool as well. And so, I mean, I could go on and on with the different tools, but those are some of my main go-tos. You know, those are some of my main go-tos from G Suite to, to Voxer to, um, to um, Classflow. Uh, those are some of my main ones. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I just so checked out that classroom screen and um, it seems really cool. So I just dropped it in the YouTube live chat. Yeah. So cool, cool. So I know that you do a lot of Passascope EDU and sometimes you have your sons on there with you. So that is yeah. really cool. So so what's it like to collaborate with your sons in that way? And uh, how can parents include their, their children in uh, similar projects? Yeah, so uh, that actually happened on accident. You know, because uh, I'm in there, do pass my sons come in on me, <clears throat> and so they were like, Okay, what are you doing, dad? So, since we're live, I'm like, Okay, well, you come on, and since we're live, you tell them this is what I'm doing, and you tell them about yourself, and you tell them uh, uh what you think this means. Because, with those of you who are not familiar with Passive Scope, um, every month we have a, a, a theme, um, uh, and so uh collaborating with him, now he actually looks forward to doing a Passascope or broadcasting live, as he says, you know, he, he wants a, a YouTube channel. So I'm like, nah, you, you know, nah, not yet. You're, you're only eight. You're not getting a YouTube channel at this point. Not until you have exactly what you want to talk about, uh, uh, what you're going to do and things of that nature. So I think having, having him to collaborate with me on Passascope it's just a good way to kind of lead him into that uh, era, era, into that area. <clears throat> he wants to talk about how to be on camp, uh, on camera, and things of that nature. When it comes to um, like other, like parents and whatnot, uh, 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 collaborating, including their kids, similar ways. Um, um, if what, what I'll do is. Uh, what I would like to say is for them to, uh, you know, trust the kid to at least start to show them a few different things. Uh, so one thing that I use at home with my kids is Google Classroom. So I actually put some different uh, 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 activities into a Google Classroom for them and allow them to just like how I use it at work. I use it at home with them. And so um, I'm going to start using uh, a class craft. I don't know if you are familiar with class craft or not. So we're going to start incorporating that with their chores and things of that nature for that piece. But I would definitely say to uh, technology is here. The software is here. It's not going anywhere. Parents need to at least try to take advantage of the parts that they are comfortable with and try to incorporate them and use them, help to develop some skills with their kids. 
I love that. I really, really do. I love like uh, how you're bringing Google Classroom into your home as well as Classcraft. Like that's just that's just so cool. And I love the fact that like now you don't need to have like a an edu account, you know, to have the classrooms, so you can do it with a straight Gmail. So that's really cool. And 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 also a good idea to bring that Classcraft in. Wow, I, I never even thought about that. So super cool. I want to give a huge shout out to Rochelle who's watching right now. She's also commenting on classroom screen. She said she learned about it last week. And she said you can translate the taskbar into different languages too. So that is cool. Very, very cool. So so 2018, 2018 is upon us right now. So what can we expect to see from you this year? Um, you know, for for me. You know, I try to take it day by day, but of course, you know, we all have to, uh, especially if I'm going to ISTE this year, we all have to plan out ahead of time, right? You know, so, you know, um, so for me, I haven't even done my one word yet. You know, a lot of people have done that one word for 2018. No, I haven't done mine because I cannot decide which word it should be, you know, but uh, because I have quite a few. But anyway, um, for me, for 2018, I think the main thing, for me this year is going to just be continuing to cultivate relationships, uh, build new relationships, um, and then also um, reconnect with people who I haven't connected with in a while. Uh, and so I'm going to have a, a focus on more on the relationship piece. Uh, and then who knows, that could be my uh, my one word, uh, relationships. So, um, so that's going to be my uh, my main goals for this year of, um, last year I was able to do, uh, the, uh, OV Academy, which, you know, you were there as well. So I'm looking forward to doing some, uh, uh, keynoting, uh, this year. Um, I just did my first ignite talk at the Mississippi educator Com uh, computer association. Um, and so I just did my first ignite talk there and that was, I thoroughly enjoyed that. Uh, and so I'm looking forward to, uh, connecting with others, uh, learning with and learning from others as well. So that's mainly it for 2018. Oh, that sounds like an amazing year. So <laughs> and I love what you were saying also about the relationships. That is, that is key. You know, I feel like I need to do that myself too. So that's, that's great advice. Great advice. All right. So this, this time has just flown by. So I can't believe that we're already on the last question, but how can people connect with you if they want to connect with you uh, online? Where can they find you? Um, I try to keep it simple. If they just go to wileybrazier.com, they can reach me there. Uh, they can connect with me on uh, wileybrazier.com. Uh, I'm on Twitter. It's the same thing, Wiley, at Wiley Brazier. On, um, um, I'm on Instagram, but I'm not really on Instagram. <laughs> I don't even have any posts or anything of that nature. I mainly use the uh, uh, the Twitter and, and, and my website. But the best place to get uh, to catch me is is just wallybrazier.com and it'll take you to uh, wherever you need to go. I've got a lot of resources and things of that nature there, and just continuing to to grow that resource database for others to to use. That is awesome. Well, I definitely wanted to thank you so much, Wiley, for, for being here with us today. It was a pleasure to chat with you. And uh, for everybody tuning in either now or later, just wanted to thank you all as well. So uh, also tonight at 6 Eastern, so that's going to be in a little under two hours, we're going to have a tweet and talk about empathy. So hopefully we see you all there, uh, podcasts.edumatch.org forward slash tweet talk. There's still time to sign up as well. So uh, uh, just make sure you you at me so I can see you and add you to the calendar invite. So uh, at edu underscore match. So everybody, thank you so much and uh, looking forward to seeing y'all later. Bye.